the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. The power of time for a map attack can affect the clouds in southern China. It is the first major tropical storm of the season. After roaring off the Philippines' northeastern coast, the typhoon is heading toward the island of Taiwan. It's expected to hit China's coastal provinces of Zhejiang and Fujian on Saturday. The typhoon is packing gusts of up to 68 meters per second, and will also down torrential rain. One of the hardest hit regions is central China's Hubei province, located along the mid to lower reaches of the Yangtze River. Fourteen people have lost their lives and one is missing due to weather-related incidents. The provincial capital Wuhan, home to some 11 million residents, has witnessed a record 560 millimeters of precipitation over the past week and about 760,000 people there are affected and emergency supplies like beds, water and tents have been dispatched and authorities have allocated about 70 million yuan for relief efforts. Severe weather washed out several 4th of July celebrations in the east. Kentucky, one of the hardest hit areas, more than a third of the state was under a severe thunderstorm warning for most of the day. The National Weather Service will likely inspect destruction by this funnel cloud in eastern Kentucky to determine if it was a tornado. Mark Barber of our affiliate WKYT is in Lexington with a look at the damage across the state. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Here in Lexington, people will be spending the next few days clearing toppled trees and cleaning up damaged homes. The powerful storm has left its mark all across the state of Kentucky. This storm, spotted in Louisa, Kentucky, near the border of West Virginia, was part of a weather system that ripped through the state. A possible twister tore through the local Walmart. Parts of the roof were sheared off and the damage inside was widespread. There's merchandise is strewn out throughout the entire store. Outside, the storm's violent winds flipped a truck. Trees and light poles snapped at their base. This fireworks stand in the parking lot didn't stand a chance. It literally looked like a, a funnel in the sky there. It was coming over that mountain. It was, it was filled. About 100 miles to the west in Lexington, high winds brought down trees and damaged homes. I thought it was coming through the house. It sounded like it was coming through the house. The local 4th of July celebration in Lexington started out fine, but was interrupted by heavy rains and powerful winds by early afternoon. It flattened the tents, it blew all the gear down, everything soft and wet, people were running for their lives it looked like. About 50 miles south in Rockcastle County, Steve Lunsford watched from the window of his home as the storm threw his car around like a toy. It just picked it straight up and set her down over here. Just. For many in the region, the 4th of July did not end with a blast. Seoul and Washington are conducting another joint military exercise on Wednesday off the southeastern city of Pohang, this time involving the few and the proud, the Marines. Over 800 South Korean and 500 American Marines are taking part in the drill dubbed the final exercise, mobilizing some 150 tactical equipment, including Super Cobra helicopters and K-1 tanks. According to Korea's Marine Corps, the joint exercise is aimed at destroying key enemy facilities while enhancing interoperability between the two allies. The drill is scheduled to run through July 14th. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell. In all the nations that forget God, the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, 
and has become the habitation of devils. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is redeemed. Let me start by once again commenting on the horrific terrorist attack that took place yesterday in Istanbul's main international airport, which is one of the busiest airports in the world. Uh, the prayers of the American people are with the people of Turkey, the people of Istanbul, uh, and all those who were affected by this terrible crime. First of all, the integration of national economies into a global economy. That's here. That's done. And so the question is not whether or not there's going to be an international global economy. There is one. And we're building an inclusive society uh, in which everybody's got a fair shot. That's how we're going to solve these problems. So we're going to keep on pushing hard to shape a, a, an international order that works for our people. Greetings, everybody, and God bless you. Um, it's been a few days since I've, I've been on here. I hope everybody uh, had a safe 4th of July weekend uh, with your families. Um, it, as I say every time, it's, it's incredible just to look at everything that's just occurred over the last few days um, and how fast things are moving. As Pastor J.D. says from Aloha Bible Prophecy, things are moving at neck break speed, literally, um, as we approach the coming of the Messiah, um, which is at the door. Um, th this Bre Brexit is what they're calling it. Um, a lot of people have asked me about Brexit. And um, if you go look into it, you know, it, it's incredible to see how this plays a role, too, in, in terms of Bible prophecy, um, in terms of the United Kingdom, um, you know, leave, leaving the European Union, in terms of Brit Britain leaving the European Union. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, this, this, there's talk of a European super state coming out of this. Um, other countries may follow this as well. Um, but, but it's incredible just to see how all this is unfolding, uh, especially in wake of the recent terrorist attacks, which there's been like four of them, four or five of them in the last like week. Um, as we approach the end of Ramadan, which is uh, coming up here in a day or two, I believe it's the 7th of July is the end of Ramadan. Um, but, but basically, you, you know, Especially with, you know, everybody, when you try to talk to people about Bible prophecy, um, about the Lord Jesus Christ, and so that, that, you know, that they can come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what it's all about. It's about Him. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Him and what He did on that cross for me, for you, to the Jew first, to the Greek, to all of us, to the black, to the white, to the blue. It doesn't matter to all of us, because it says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But you know, we see in the world today that it's like just like it was in the days of Noah and Lot. People are marrying, giving in marriage, planting, building, eating, drinking. Things are going on as normal. Violence, widespread. <laughs> People are saying, where is the promise of his coming? They're saying, you know, people have been saying for, for generations that the Lord's coming back. You know, here's the thing. Israel's rebirth as a nation in May of 1948, as I always say and many others, was a major timepiece in Bible prophecy. 
the parable of the fig tree, which you can find in the book of Matthew 24, speaks of when you see Israel become a nation, that generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Now there's a lot of debate. People are saying, okay, well, a generation is 40 years, a generation is 70, 80 years. Jesus isn't trying to say, guys, you know, when Israel becomes a nation, take a wild guess when I'm coming. Maybe it's 40 years, maybe it's 70. He's saying when you see Israel become a nation, know that it is near, that it is at the doors, that I'm coming quickly. And we saw that happen in May of 1948. Israel became a nation. Jesus likens his return to a woman about to give birth. He talks about the birth pangs, the contractions getting closer and closer together. We look around the world right now and we see how fast things are moving. How everything is in place. Prophecies like Ezekiel 38, Psalm 83, Isaiah 17. Things that a few years ago weren't on the verge of fulfillment are literally in play, place right in front of us now. They're in motion for full now, for fulfillment, excuse me. The signs in the heavens, which we talk about, signs in the sun, signs in the moon, signs in the stars, blood moons again that are falling on the Lord's feast days, eclipses falling on appointed times. These are signs. Signs are meant to be seen before the event. So we, we see these things coming to pass, showing us where we stand. The earthquakes in diverse places. For somebody, if you don't think that the earthquakes are in diverse places, go just look at the uh, the earthquake activity right now. You're seeing them in Yellowstone. You're seeing them in California, New Madrid. You're seeing them all over the world. And, and good size, too. Good size. So, yes, earthquakes are diverse. The volcanic activity is very, very large right now. All over the world. Increase in, in volcanic activity. Look at the flooding. You know, it's, again, we could spend hours talking about everything that's going on right now. But the question you ask, have to ask yourself is, have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Because he's the only way. He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to the kingdom of God. That's another thing going on right now, the deception. That all religions get you to the same God. That Christians and uh, the I Islam worship the same God. No, Allah is a false god. Allah is a false god. Muhammad is a false prophet. There is one mediator between God and men, and that is Jesus Christ. So if you're someone that has not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. Yes, Jesus Christ is coming back imminently. The signs of his return are all around us. And it's all in his holy word. Because he told us the things to look for to signal that he is near and at the doors. And he says, when you see these things come to pass, begin to come to pass, know that it is near at the doors. But again, Jesus likens his return to a woman about to give birth. The contractions get closer and closer together. You know, I've never seen a live birth, and I know you women out there know giving birth that right before the baby comes, the contractions get closer and closer together. We're seeing the contractions getting closer and closer and closer together at neck break speed. The king is coming. Jesus is coming. If you have not made that decision, make the best decision of your eternity today because there's two destinations after you leave this body. And that's heaven or that's hell. And there is one way to the kingdom of heaven. There is one mediator between God and men. And that is Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords the way, the truth, and the life. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Muhammad's not going to save you. Allah will not save you. The Virgin Mary will not save you. The Easter Bunny, Father McMuffin, none other will save you. No other false gods or idols. There is one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and that is Jesus Christ. He gave himself for you on that cross because we're all guilty. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He nailed the sins of the world on that cross with him. That bloodstained cross for me, for you, for everyone. But we have to receive that gift. We all have free will, but the choice is yours. 
Will you receive that gift today? Because today is the day of salvation. We're not promised our next breath. You could breathe your last breath today and wake up either in an eternity in heaven or in an eternity separated from God. And the choice is yours. Romans 10.9 says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. Invite him into your life today. Confess your sins. Admit to him that you are guilty before him. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner. I admit to you that I am guilty before you. I have fallen. I am a sinner. I ask, Lord Jesus Christ, that you forgive me of my sins and that you cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that you rose from the dead on the third day. Purify me, Lord. Sanctify me. Cleanse me. Lead me. Be born again today. Because except a man be born again, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So confess your sins, repent of your sins, lead a new life in Jesus Christ today. Because today is the day of salvation, and the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back quickly. So God bless each and every one of you. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God is coming quickly. And if you're someone that hasn't made that decision make the best decision of your eternity today call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today give your life to him today make the best decision of your eternity today God bless each and every one of you I received this message today this is a message I received I received this date today, July 6th at 4 p.m. Tell my people, this is it, my son. The trials and testings are going to end. Immediately, my son, you and many will be in my presence. Tell my people, what is about to take place is the harpezo, the rapture, the great catching away. My son, the moment is going to happen quickly, in a flash. The kingdom awaits all my children who await my appearing. Shalom, my bride. For God will bring every deed into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved through faith. This is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out. And I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> you have sinned against God, like I have. He calls us to love and obey him in everything we do, what we do in front of people, what we do in secret, even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, he proved that. God became a man, Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. 
He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell. And he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus. If it's not too late, forgive me for my sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King.